Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Amen. I pray everyone, amen, has had an awesome and productive day on today. Amen. Good to see you all on tonight. Amen. And it's my prayer. Amen. Amen. And it's my prayer. Amen. That you all are truly and richly blessed on this blessed and wonderful evening. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. Uh, just want to share, amen, a brief selection with you on tonight, and we'll go ahead and get into what we're going to get into. Amen. How you doing, Sister Clara? Hello. How you doing? Hey, wifey. How you doing? Amen. Sister Evelyn, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Sister Emma? Amen. I think I saw my mother-in-law on there. Amen. God bless you real good. Here's my prayer. Amen. Amen. Good to see you all. On this blessed and wonderful evening. Amen. Amen. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. <laughs> prayer, amen, that tonight, amen, be life-changing 
amen, in your Christian walk to where you will be, draw more closer to God and that you would allow yourself to be used, amen, in a better and mighty way uh, as you walk along your way with our Heavenly Father, amen. I want you tonight to turn to the 118th Psalm, the 118th Psalm, amen. And we're going to take a look at one verse for our reading on tonight, but we'll also use other supporting verses on tonight to share what it is that we're going to share on this blessed and wonderful evening, amen. So Psalm 118, Psalm 118, amen, and we're going to take a look at one line, amen. Psalm 118 and 8, amen, amen. Psalm 118, line number, line number 8. Look what the word of God says. We'll share the word and then we'll pray. It says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. My God, amen. The grass withered and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let us pray on tonight. Lord God, thank you for this evening. And I thank you for these, your people, who've tuned in on tonight. My prayer is that, dear God, that you would have your way. And Lord, that you would use me in spite of me. Lord, I realize, Father God, that I am nothing but a mere vessel. Lord, I'm an instrument, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, dear God, that you would just use me, dear God, to proclaim your awesome and perfect word. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I give you honor. And Lord, I give you all the glory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. We do pray, Lord. Amen and amen and amen again. Amen. Truly, God is good. He is good all of the time. Amen. On tonight, amen, we're going to take a look at the idea, amen, of trust. Amen. Amen. And the subject for tonight's lesson is better to trust. Amen. Better, better to trust. In our lives and in society, society and in our world, there's so many things that we place our trust and our confidence in. Um, many a times we allow ourselves to put all of our confidence and all of our trust in certain things that in many cases, amen, in many cases, let us down time after time after time after time again. And so we've got to understand that in this Christian walk, we've got to make sure that we understand that it is better to trust in in the Lord, amen, because we cannot allow our hearts and our minds to really have too much faith, trust, and confidence in anything, amen, besides the Lord, his word, and what it is that he has, what, what he has promised us. But it's easy to do because what I've learned is that it's human nature to really begin to yield to or draw to things that we feel, watch me now, that we feel are holding us up, right? And what God does, he shows us over time that it wasn't the things that we thought that was holding us up. <laughs> it was him, it was what he had to offer, and it was the things that he had what? Provided to us. God just uses things, people, and the things around us, amen, to help provide for us and show us and share with us. But ultimately, at the end of the day, Lord have mercy, 
our faith and our trust have got to be in the Lord, amen, the Lord himself. Look what it says. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence, watch it now, in man, all right? And that whole idea of trust, it just means to place all of your confidence in. It means to be all in or your, or your go-to, amen, your go-to. And many of us can relate to that, right? All of us have a go-to, something that we trust in, something that we run to, amen, to kind of bail us out, <laughs> amen, when we're in a certain situation, whether it's on your job, whether, you know, it, it's things that you're doing, project that you may be doing, you have what? You have a go-to, amen. But I want to share with us on tonight, amen, that God wants to ultimately be our go-to, amen. Amen. When we're in trouble, he wants us to go to him. Amen. When we're in need, he wants us to go to him. Amen. And praise the Lord. When there's sickness in our body, he wants us to go to him. Amen. When things don't seem, amen, like they're going quite well, he wants us to go, go to him. Amen. Even when we feel as though, amen, things are going well in our lives, he wants us to go to him to give him praise, honor, and glory. God really wants us to place our full trust and confidence in him, and God says he wants uh, him to be our go-to. Amen, amen, and praise, amen, and praise the Lord. And so in Psalm 118, and eight, amen, we find, amen, King David has penned these words. Now, if you read the life of King David, we know that he was considered the apple of God's eye. He was a man after God's own heart, amen, and praise the Lord. He wasn't a perfect man. He made many, 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 many mistakes in his life. He had much or many shortcomings, but yet at the same time, at the end of the day, he understood where his, what? Where his hope, amen, where his help came, where his help came from. And so he penned these words. He says, it is better to trust the Lord than to put your confidence in your confidence in man. Now watch, here's the thing. This scripture talks about man, but I want to I want to submit to us on tonight. Amen. It's better for us to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in man or anything else that we seek to put in the place of God. Lord, have mercy. Because really and truthfully, many of us can say, amen, that we've had individuals to let us down. We've had things that we've trusted in let us down. Things that we go to to what? Let us down. And the word is letting us know it is better to trust in, to trust in the Lord. Now watch, you might be asking the question, Pastor, why is it better to trust in the Lord? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked me. I'm going to give you, amen, I'm going to give you some reasons why it is better to trust in the Lord. And I pray to God that you would receive what it is that we're going to share on tonight. In Psalm 32 and 10, Psalm 32 and 10, it says this, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trust in the Lord, mercy, watch it now, shall surround him. I'll read it one more time. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trust in the Lord, mercy, shall surround him. I've heard so many people say these words. Some guys or some girls 
have all the look. <laughs> You've heard it. Amen. You've heard some people talk about, oh, they are just so lucky. Amen and praise the Lord. But I want to share with us on tonight that when you trust in God, when you put your faith in your heavenly father, when you put your faith in the one, amen, that's all powerful, all knowing, amen, that's everywhere at the same time, that knows everything. Can I help you when you put your faith and your trust in him? The Bible says this, mercy, what, shall surround him. Amen and praise the Lord. So what you've got to understand is this. When folks start to talking you up and folks start to giving you praise and folks start to try to put you on a pedestal, you better let them know, guess what? No, I'm not lucky. Lord, the Lord has been merciful unto me. I'm not lucky. The Lord has been gracious unto me. Why? Not because I'm all that, but because I put my trust in my trust in him. You got to get that and you got to get that in your spirit. God lets us know that when we place our trust in him, when we give him our whole heart, mercy will surround us. Amen. How many of you glad for mercy? Amen. Some things, amen, that could have come your way. Amen. God blocked it. There's some things that could have taken you out, but God blocked it. Some stuff that tried to take you out, but God blocked it. The devil tried to attack you, but God blocked it. God lets us know when we place our faith and our trust in him, mercy, Lord have mercy, will, will surround us. So people of God, you've got to understand this one thing. God just wants to know, amen, if he has our whole, our whole heart, amen. And what God will do, God will protect us from some things. Amen. God will allow some things to stay away from us that may have taken somebody out. The Bible says mercy shall surround him. If you look at the beginning of Psalm 118, it starts out, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say his mercy <laughs> endures forever. Forever. Let the house of Aaron now say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say his mercy endures forever. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Thank you Holy Spirit. How many of you can praise God on tonight? Amen. And just testify with me that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you place your full trust in God and God done some things for you, protected you from some things that guess what? <laughs> that your alarm system couldn't protect you from. That that 45, that 9 millimeter couldn't protect you from. And God allowed his mercy <laughs> to surround, to surround you. Amen. And praise and praise the Lord. So why is it better to trust the Lord? <laughs> so you can receive, Lord have mercy, his mercy. Come with me, come with me if you can. And Psalm 34, amen, Psalm 34 and 8, a very familiar passage. It says, oh, taste and see <laughs> that the Lord is good. <laughs> oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in, in him. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. I love, amen. I love to go by Chicken King after church, amen, and get that good old fried chicken, amen. And I can say, oh, taste and see that this greasy, unhealthy chicken is good, amen. Many of you, amen, are going to Billy's and say, yeah, <laughs> taste and see that this old Buddha and crackling is good. But God showed me a long time ago and he's allowed me to experience 
that even if I had not eaten in three days, <laughs> I can say in my spirit, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good because he satisfies you. He allows you to experience his peace. He allows you to experience his love. He allows you to experience his joy and he fills you. He satisfies you, amen, and praise the Lord with the things you need that money can't buy, that people can't give you, and the world can't give you, and can never take, take away. Lord, 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 please, Lord, please have mercy on us on tonight. So why, pastor, is it better to trust the Lord? <laughs> why? Because he'll give you satisfaction. <laughs> See, if you trust in the Lord, you won't be relying on those other things that's going to let you down. He'll fulfill you. And he'll give you a fulfillment, amen, that draws money, alcohol, women, men, nobody, nobody can fulfill you with. Because when all that stuff runs out, <laughs> he is still, he's still there. <laughs> Somebody come with me. Come with me if you can. He'll give you what? He'll give you satisfaction. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. We see that on, amen, the stuff we buy on, in the store. But I'm here to tell you, if I could put a label on God, I'd say satisfaction guaranteed. <laughs> Somebody come with me. Come with me. Come with me if you can. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So pastor, you said, why is it better to trust the Lord for his mercy? <laughs> why else, pastor, for his satisfaction? And these are only the things that God can do, amen, in such a way that nothing else and nobody else can what? Can feel and fulfill in your life. Come with me. Psalms, Psalm 56 and 11. Psalm 56 and 11. This one is dear to me. Psalm 56 and 11. Look what it says. In God I have put my trust. I will not, hear me well, be afraid. Look what he says. He says, what can man do <laughs> to me? Oh, Jesus have mercy. In God I will put my trust and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? And if you go back to Psalm 118 and 6, it says this, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do? What can man do to me? We've got to get that in our spirit, amen, and praise the Lord. There's so many things going on in our world today and in our society. Some people are scared to go to the store. Some people are scared to walk in the park. Some people are scared to live. Some people deal with anxiety because they deal with maybe somebody's going to attack me. But God showed me this one thing, amen, when the Lord is on my side, I will not fear what can man do, <laughs> what can man do to me? Lord have mercy. So you've got to understand this one thing. The Bible says this, and do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill, but cannot kill the soul. So you've got to understand that God got you either way. <laughs> Amen. And so you've got to rely on what he has to offer. Amen. In your life. So that you won't walk around, amen, fearing living, fearing going to the store. No, God, God, you got me. God, you got me in your hand. Lord, I'm trusting and leaning and depending, depending on you. Lord, have mercy. You've got to get that and you've got to get that in your, in your spirit. There are people who trust in the weapons, the concealed weapons that they carry. Some people trust in, 
Amen. Praise the Lord and the things that they feel they know. But God showed me a long time ago what God he does is he shows you. Amen. Even when you don't have those things on you. Amen. He still has a way of what? Of protecting you. So don't walk around in fear. Don't live life in anxiety. Trust that God is who he is and that he can he can keep you. Amen. And praise the Lord. So, Pastor, why is it better to trust in the Lord so that you can have, amen, so that you can have some courage, amen, and praise the Lord so that you can, so that you can be strong in, in the Lord and not confident in the power of your might, but you can be confident in the power of his might, amen. And praise the Lord so you can you can you can trust him so why is it better to trust in the Lord <laughs> number one mercy amen <laughs> number two satisfaction number three courage amen and praise praise the Lord here's another one Psalm 146 and 3 look what it says do not put your trust in princes nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. But look what Proverbs 29 and 25 says. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Ooh, Lord have mercy. You got to get that one. See, when we give... Man, amen, too much power. <laughs> and we allow ourselves to make him more powerful than he really is. Really, we get ourselves in trouble. When we give the world too much credit, when we give others too much credit, the Bible says this, it says fear of man brings a snare. What does it bring? A dangerous trap or trouble. Don't get yourself trapped and caught up in thinking that those in the White House have the power. Don't you dare get caught up in thinking that those in Russia have the power. Don't you dare get caught up in thinking that those, amen, who have access to nuclear bombs have the power. I want you to understand that whoever trusts in the Lord shall, shall be safe. And so we've got to understand, we've got to trust in God. Amen. Don't you dare give man too much credit. Lord have mercy. What else, pastor? You have got to understand that trusting in God would allow you to experience real security. Woo, Jesus. Trusting in God will allow you to experience real security real security. I want to help somebody on tonight because I'm led to share it on tonight and I pray to God that it blesses you on tonight. Many of us and really all of us, man, woman, boy, and girl, everybody, amen, wants to experience feeling safe. Everybody wants to experience, amen, it, that what that security we, we, we want to say amen that that that, that I'm secure I, I, I have what I what I need amen if I need something I'm okay and we want to feel that sense of what of security I want to help somebody on tonight it is so dangerous amen to allow ourselves to let our security be based on mere earthly things, things that we possess, or the people that are around us. You've got to get me, amen. Now watch me. That is not to say, amen, you don't live in the world and you don't take the necessary steps and precautions you need to take. But guess what? At the end of the day, the Lord showed me you can't put all your confidence in stuff and have a false sense of security. I want to talk to somebody on tonight. Amen.
Amen. Don't you rely, amen, on no woman to, guess what, help you to feel secure. Don't you allow no man to help you feel secure. Don't you allow no job to help you to feel secure. Don't you allow, amen, your bank account to allow you to feel secure. God showed me a long time ago he can wipe out, take out, throw out any of those things and what will happen is we will fall flat on our face because we had a false sense of security. Lord, have mercy. So you've got to be confident in the Lord. Amen. Confident in who he is. Confident in what he can do. Amen. And then you let the rest be what it's going what it's going to be. Lord, Lord have mercy. So what else, Pastor? The Lord will allow you to experience real security. Lord have mercy. He'll allow you to experience a real, not a false sense of security. Okay, Pastor, when am I experiencing a false sense of security? When my trust is in something that is temporary. Woo, Jesus. When your trust is in anything that's temporary. Amen, amen, and praise, and praise, praise the Lord. So you've got to get that, and you've got to get that in your spirit. Pastor, what did you share with me? Go back over, why is it better, amen, to trust the Lord? <laughs> this is why, so you can experience his mercy. What else, pastor? So that you can be satisfied. Why else, pastor? So that you can walk in confidence and courage in knowing who God is and also that you can experience true safety and security in, in Jesus Christ. I want to leave you with this. We must be careful not to give others Watch me now, you got to get this one. Ourselves or any earthly possession too much credit and put our full confidence in any one of those things. I'll say it one more time. We must be careful not to give others, ourselves, and earthly possessions too much credit. Amen and place our full confidence in any one of those, any one of those things. Amen. And praise, and praise the Lord. God showed me this. God shows us in tough times where our trust is. Now you got to hear me, and you got to hear me well. I know people, amen, who want to give up living when certain things or certain people leave their life. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. I think I'm helping somebody on tonight. There's certain people, amen, who want to throw in the towel because they feel that certain things, amen, didn't pan out a certain way. I know many people, amen, praise the Lord. They want to chunk the deuces or give up, amen, because certain things, amen, they can't what get their hands on anymore. But I want to help somebody on tonight. Make sure your trust is in the Lord that when all those things play out, when all those things wear out, when all those things, amen, go out of your life, you understand and know that guess what? In God I have, in Him I have my trust. Amen and praise, praise the Lord. So you've got to understand that your relationship with God, your trust in God has to supersede anything in your life. Now that's not a life to where you just go through life, amen, amen, and not live and, and, and not partake of anything and not be around anybody and not trust anybody. No, that's not the message that pastor's trying to get you to understand. But you better understand and know when things fade out, <laughs> fall out, and wear out in your life, guess what? Don't be surprised because God already told you it is better to trust in the Lord. <laughs> 
Somebody come with me if you can. So my prayer on tonight is that you would understand that it is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Put your confidence in anything or anybody else. Put your confidence in anything that you can put your hands on. Why? Because at the end of the day, guess what? The Lord, amen, has you in his hands here on earth and even into eternity. So can I help you? It would behoove you to put your pl and place your trust and put your trust in the one, amen, who has control, amen, over your yesterday, <laughs> who has control over your today, and who has control over your tomorrow, amen, and praise the Lord. He has all power. He's all-knowing, amen, and he's I'm not present, and he can. He can be trusted. I know I got somebody, at least five people on tonight can testify that God, amen, has come through for you and shown you that what he can, he can be trusted. And I want to help somebody who's growing in the Lord. You may be new in the faith. Can I help you? God's going to grow you up. He's going to show you time after time again that he can be trusted. All he wants is your heart. All he wants, amen, is for you to trust him and be vulnerable enough to say, Lord, amen, I surrender. I give you my whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And Lord, I'm trusting you that you got me. Amen. And praise, praise the Lord on tonight. I pray to God that you are blessed on this evening. And I pray to God that you would understand and know that trusting in God will allow you to experience his mercy Experience a satisfied soul, amen. Experience a life of courage and confidence in, in the Lord and to have security, security in Jesus, amen. Amen and praise, praise the Lord. I wanna pray with you and I wanna pray for you on tonight, amen. And I pray to God, amen, that you, amen, would pray along with me, amen, as we pray on this evening, amen. And we're going to just, Lord, just go to God, and ask God those things that we have need of. Let us pray. Lord, on tonight, we thank you. And we give you honor, praise, and glory. Lord, we thank you for your word. For your word is true. And Lord, we understand that your word will never, ever pass away. And Lord, we thank you. And we thank you, Lord, that every time, Lord, we go to it, Lord, you give us something, dear God. We thank you right now. I pray for every heart, mind, and soul who tuned in on tonight, Lord, that you would bless their hearts. Help them, Lord, to move on in your word, Lord, and Lord, in your will. Pray, Lord, tonight there may be some sinner that don't know you. Lord, help them to understand and know that Christ died. Lord, Christ died for their sins. And Lord, that they can accept Christ as their Lord, as their Savior. Lord, and that they do not have to be sinners. They don't have to walk amen with sins guilty stain but Lord they can be saved and forgiven by the precious blood of Jesus the Christ because Lord you hung bled and died and rose the third day for their sins we pray tonight for somebody Lord who needs a healing touch right now deliver right now Father God like only you can give them your comfort your peace and your healing power we pray tonight for somebody on tonight Lord whose mind is confused dear God Lord, touch them right now, Lord. Regulate their thoughts, Lord, and help them, dear God, to move forward, Lord, in your word. Somebody on tonight, Lord, may have been down and out, Lord. Give them strength to continue and to endure and give them hope and peace and knowing, Lord, that you put them here for a reason and, Lord, that you got something else for them to do, Lord God. Lord, it's my prayer, Lord, that you watch over our nation, watch over our world, watch over our leaders, dear God, locally, nationally, worldwide, and help them to understand their purpose is to, Lord, serve the people that they lead. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you watch over churches all over the globe, that, Lord, that Christ become, Lord, the main thing, and, Lord, we proclaim your word. Lord, so that we go out, Lord, and win souls to the kingdom. Lord, that winning souls become a top priority. Lord, not filling seats, not growing the bank account. Lord, not trying to impress folks, but Lord, just seeking your will. 
Lord, making disciples and building your kingdom and not our own. Lord, have your way on tonight, Father God, and do whatever, whatever you want to do, Father God. We thank you tonight. We love you tonight. We bless your name, Father God, because we understand you said in your word, dear God, the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. And Lord, we come to you because we understand and know that we have not because we ask not. And Lord, we come asking you on tonight, Father God. Knowing, Lord, that you're willing and you are able to hear our cry. Thank you, dear God, for what it is that you've done already and what it is, dear God, that you're doing right now. Whatever you decide to do, Father God, thank you right now. We love you. We bless you. We pray for, Lord, bow down heads and bereave hearts on tonight. Someone may have lost a loved one on tonight. Give them, Lord. Give them, Lord, a peace, Father God. And if their loved one died in Jesus, they can rejoice and knowing that they don't have to cry as one that has no hope. Lord, have your way, Father God. Do what you got to do, dear God. Work and move, Father God. We're expecting, we're walking in hope, dear God. We're trusting in you. We're walking by faith and not by sight. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you, dear God. Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, we love you. And we give you all honor. It's in the mighty, precious, blessed, and wonderful name of Jesus. We do pray in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. Bless you, saints. It's my prayer. Amen. That you would go out and tell somebody about Jesus. Go out and live for Jesus. Amen. And allow God to use you in a way. Amen. That blesses. Amen. The lives of others. That proclaims Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And that gives glory, honor, and praise to God Almighty. God bless you, saints of God. I love you. Amen. Amen. God loves you. Amen. And there's nothing in the whole wide world you can do, you can do about it. Amen. God bless you. And God bless you real good. Before I go, amen. The Bible says you have not. Because you ask not. But we've got to make sure when we ask, it's got to be in his will. Amen. And I'm going to ask for something on tonight. Amen. There's many of you on the line. Amen. That, amen, you have influence. Amen. And this is my prayer. This coming Sunday, amen, is considered our men's Sunday. Amen. My, my little nephew, amen, my little nephew, Amen, Jaden, he takes the count for me every Sunday. Amen, praise the Lord. And he tells me how many men, how many women, how many children. And every time he gives me the number, Lord have mercy, the women outnumber the men. <laughs> the children outnumber the men. And I am asking, amen, amen, if you know someone, amen, amen. If you know someone, a man that is not in anybody's church, amen. Somebody, amen, that might know the Lord who does not attend church. Somebody you know might be, amen, struggling with their walk with God. I want you, amen, to invite them to church this coming Sunday. 103 Second Road, amen, and praise the Lord, amen. And I want to share something on tonight. Any man who loves God, amen, and any man who's a real man, amen, they won't send their children off to church, send their wife off to church, amen. <laughs> they won't watch their loved ones, amen, attend service. No, anyone or any man who really loves God is going to what? Is going to bring their family to church and they're going to wake everybody up in the house and say, it's time to go worship the Lord. Amen. So I'm asking on tonight. Amen. Everybody under the sound of my voice. Amen. If you know a male who is not in church, one who does not, amen, their relationship with God, amen, is kind of kind of rocky. Amen. Somebody you know, amen, they may know the Lord, but don't attend any 
anybody's church. We ain't trying to pull forth from nobody else's church. That's not what we do. There's enough people, enough souls to be saved to where we don't have to swap members. Amen. Somebody come with me if you can. Right? And I want you to use your influence to get men in church on Sunday. Amen. Because whether we like it or not, God has called the man to lead. Just because, women, listen to me. Don't take offense. Just because that man might not be doing what God has called him to do, he might not be leading, he might not understand his role, don't mean that God won't hold him accountable. Woo! Somebody come with me if you can. So I'm praying tonight that you would get men in church on Sunday, amen, and that you would use your influence Amen. To fill the house. Amen. With men on this coming Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. And all I can do is what? All I can do is ask. Amen. You, you're going to do whatever you want to do. But guess what? I'm praying. I'm praying to God and I'm, I'm expecting. I'm expecting God to move. Amen. I'm expecting him to move. Amen. And it is my prayer. Amen. That we fill the house with men because what I'm learning is men have a hard time with their walk with God at times and God got to deal with men harder amen in the process because many times many men trust in that job they trust amen in that bank account and they trust in the things they feel they can control and what I found is when God rips those things from him he don't even know how to handle life oh Jesus somebody know what I'm talking about <laughs> somebody know where I'm at amen and so it's my prayer that we feel the house with one old three second road amen give them the address tell them put it amen in the gps tell them keep driving amen they're gonna come around some curve they're gonna see all kind of trees amen tell them keep going it's back down amen you won't get to it amen then you're gonna see what god's about to do with the church amen but then you gotta look at that other little building on the side that's where they're worshiping amen and pray the tell them put it in their gps and bring me face oh jesus in the place this coming sunday amen praise praise the lord we'll promote amen bands and we'll promote <laughs> amen the next group we'll promote amen people who out there amen partying in the club but we got to promote jesus amen we've got to promote the kingdom of god we've got to let people know guess it's going down at 103 second row it's going down amen at that little church on the curb it's going down in the country amen this coming sunday and you need your face in the place amen and it's my prayer amen they may come thinking they're going to show up one time. I'm going to just do this to get this out of the way. And God put their heart, amen, in a headlock and let them know, amen, they need Jesus. Hey, come with me. Come with me if you can. So that's my challenge, amen, for us on tonight. I was supposed to do it Sunday, amen, but it didn't happen, but it don't matter. <laughs> We're going to do it through social media. You're going to hear me again. Amen. That little loud, loud, short, bald-headed preacher. Amen. He need to be quiet. Well, you got to understand what can man do to me. <laughs> you got to understand, right? So you're going to hear me again. I'm going to come back live and I'm going to challenge you again. I want us to fill this place with men this coming Sunday. There's no business. Amen. For us, amen, walking around, amen, not expecting God to do something. Amen. So my prayer is that you get men in church. Amen. So that they can begin to find their purpose, find out what God has for them, and give God their heart so God can use them, so God can grow them, so God can speak and minister minister to their hearts. God bless you, saints of God. I done kept you too long. I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to keep you this long. Amen. But I pray to God that you would accept the challenge 
and that you'd invite somebody to church this coming Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. And for some folks, all y'all do, you know, you want to use your elbow. Hey, get up. Let's go to church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Get them here. Amen. Get them here. Amen. So that they can begin on their journey and being the leaders that God had called them, have called them to be. God bless you, saints of God. Good night. I love y'all. Amen. I bless the Lord, amen, and I thank God for tonight. I enjoyed all of you on tonight, and I pray to God that you are richly and truly blessed on this magnificent evening. Bye, y'all. Love you real good. <laughs>